Hello, welcome to what is now somehow part four of my Frogger coding challenge series of making the game Frogger. So in the, at the end of part three, I have this kind of version of the game that I can actually play here. And I'm uh, in a second, I'm going to get to the top. Yay! Um, so what I want to do though, so here's the thing. I think the, for the, part, the first three parts were in some ways an illustration an example of what happens when you rush through code, you're trying to figure out stuff on the fly and things start to get very messy. I'm like, oh, I'll fix this later. And you know, I try, it's very, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm all for messy code and just having fun and trying what works. But I do think this is an opportunity <laughs> for me in my videos to take a look at what it means to refactor code. So what I would like to do in this video is change very little, really, uh, at the end of this video, I would be happy if what you see is exactly this result but the code has been rewritten in such a way that it's a bit more scalable. Right now, if I wanted to make the window taller and add more log lanes or more car lanes, I'm gonna have a very difficult time doing that. A lot of stuff was hard coded in here. So the main work that I'm going to do, and I, again, I haven't really done this before or planned this out. I'm just gonna be doing this on the fly as well. So I'm sure I'll create new problems by solving older problems, is create a lane object. So let me think about this for a second. So let's think about what is a part of the lane. So if this is the Frogger game, an individual lane has a bunch of elements to it. It, uh, it actually could be an instance of a rectangle object. Right? It could also extend rectangle because it can have you know, an x, y, and a width and a height. But ultimately, the things that I want to keep track of are number of uh, cars or logs, speed of those car, speed of those cars and logs, uh, spacing of those cars or logs. So a lane is going to keep track of all of those things on its own. Uh, it could have like a color, a color for the cars, a color for the background. So the, you can start to see like what are all the things that are part of an individual lane. And another thing, thank you to me, I am so me who suggested this. Uh, you might have noticed in my previous example that the cars and logs are actually basically identical. I'm just drawing them in a different way and ultimately, you know, I haven't, I, I'm actually not even drawing them in a different way. That's something that's still sort of like left as a next step for this program. But um, I'm, I'm interacting with them in a different way and then I'm checking whether the, you know, with the, with the logs, the frog has to land on it, with the cars, the frog has to avoid it. But I think I could just use one object and just call it an obstacle rather than have these two different objects is, is kind of unnecessary uh, at this point. Okay. Um, so coming back over here, let's start trying to do this. So let's write, let's try to write some code for the lane class. So class lane. Oh yeah, and, and um, Simon is asking in the chat, what about the safety lane? So I, that's an interesting question. I could just have a lane that has a number of obstacles as zero. That could be how I indicate if it's a safety lane. And I could also, um, there's something else I was thinking of here. Um, I could also have some sort of like a type variable, whether the lane is like a cars lane or a logs lane. And the logs could be turtles, right? And the cars could be cars or trucks. There's a lot of possibilities here. And again, I'm just trying to, to do a small, simple version of this. So coming back, let's create this lane class. And um, let's get rid of, I'm, I hesitate to do this. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save this as, oh, wait a second. Oh yeah, no, save this as Frogger2. And I'm going to delete the, the log class. Get rid of that completely, it's gonna break. Uh, I'm gonna call, it, and I'm gonna change this to uh, uh, rename. By the way, this is something that's in processing now. I'll see if this works. If I go and use rename, I can rename it to obstacle and it's gonna change it everywhere in the code. So see how well that did. Um, Attach, ah, so one place where I missed it here, because obstacle, this should still be, and this should be uh, obstacle. Ah, so many places. Okay, so now I have at least the same program again, and just obstacle instead of cars or logs. Now, back to the lane. 
So what I want to have is I want to have some array of obstacles. What else did I say? I want to have a speed. And maybe I said maybe I want this to extend a rectangle so I can have a location, a speed. What else did I say? A spacing, sorry, and a spacing. Let's just do that for right now. Let's start off simple. So in the constructor, this should say extends, the constructor should have a number of obstacles, uh, a sp um, SPD for speed and SPC for spacing. So obstacles now is a new array of obstacles with n elements in it. And speed is some speed and spacing is some, and spacing is some spacing. Okay, so this is the idea of a lane. And if it extends a rectangle, I also need to call super. And I probably should give it an x, a y, and a width, and a height. x, y, width, height. This is a lot of stuff for the constructor. I don't love that. I might want to rethink that a little bit later. But I'm going to just leave that for right now. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I just I want to get rid of all this nonsense. So I'm going to comment all, actually I'm just going to delete it. I'm just going to leave row one. I'm just going to leave row one and I'm going to get rid of this. The idea here is that instead of having two different arrays of obstacles, I want to have an array of lanes. Now how do I know how many lanes I need? Well, actually, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to have a lane object for every single horizontal bar, even the beginning bar, that middle safety lane, and the end, for example. So if I know the height in pixels, I can just say the height divided by that grid size is the number of lanes that I need. So I'm going to say lanes equals a new array of lane objects with uh, total lanes is height divided by uh, grid. And I want that to be an integer. So I'm going to convert that to an integer. Total lanes. OK. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. Refactoring. Refactoring. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, so. I want to have a total number of lanes. And here's the thing, actually, Simon in the chat is making a good suggestion. I can really simplify this. I actually don't need to pass in an x. I don't need to pass in a width or a height. Because those, the x is always going to be 0. The width is always going to be the width of the window. And the height is always going to be that grid size. So I can create its rectangle with some hard-coded values. And I feel perfectly happy with doing that. Now, and there might be some reason I have to change that another time, but that makes this much easier to read. Okay, so this is the total number of lanes. Now what I want to do is I want to loop through and create all of the lanes. So every single lane, what do I need? I need the y position, the number of obstacles, speed and spacing. So let's just pretend for a second that what I'm going to do is just put cars on all the lanes. I'm going to say a new lane at i times grid, right? So i times grid is 0 times grid is 0, 1 times grid is grid, 2 times grid is 2 times grid, so 0, 50, 100, 150. So that's going to give me all the spots. And I'm going to just put, what is the next thing? I need in the lane. The number, I'm going to put three objects in each one. Then I'm going to, um, then the next thing is the speed. I'm going to have all the speeds be uh, one. And the spacing is going to be 100. So I'm just kind of going to do this uh, in an arbitrary way. I'm going to delete this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to comment everything out. Because we're going to have to figure this out now. <laughs> Everything's going to get much better now. So this stuff, 
So what I want to do now is I want to loop through for every lane in lanes, let's say lane.show. So I want all the lanes to show. So that means I need to write a show function. And what does that show function do say? For all the obstacles, have them show. And by the way, here when I made this array, I kind of need to create all those obstacles. So now I need to say obstacles dot um, index i equals a new obstacle. Ooh, ref boy, isn't, isn't watching somebody refactor their code wildly entertaining? <laughs> I can't oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm not sure this was such a good idea. So what is it when I make an obstacle? I did that, I deleted all that stuff. I needed to keep that because I needed to reference it. But it's okay, I can remember. Um, I give it an x, a y, a width, and a height, and a speed. So the obstacles get created at, where do I do that? In the lane that get an x. The x is i plus, sorry, is the x is speed. Then what else? The speed is the lane speed. And uh, width and height is, um, oh, that's a, uh, okay. Uh, okay, I'm just going to make them squares right now. Grid comma grid. I forgot about something. Okay, so we're going to fix all this. What do I have so far? All right. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's keep doing this. <laughs> Why don't I see anything? Um, I probably forgot something rather important. Uh, I made a bunch of lanes. So let's debug this. So what's wrong here? Let's just see. Am I... So it should be drawing a bunch of things. Ah, look at this. The width is one. I messed up the width somewhere. X, oh, speed is the last argument, right? The obstacle requires X, Y, width, height, speed. X, Y, width, height, speed. Okay, so I, bunch, I made a bunch of lanes. That worked. Now let's, you know, I've gone a few steps backwards here, unfortunately, but we're going to get back we're going to get back to what we had. It's, this is going to be good. Trust me. Stay with me here. Please stay with me. Um, let's say uh, lane.update. What was it? This is not update. No, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, I should just make a run function. Let's just make it run. I might regret this later. And we'll do uh, show update. So lane.run. OK, so all the lanes are working. Uh, now, they're all doing exactly the same thing. That's fine. Is it going to come back? Yes, they're coming back. Okay, so this is good. My lanes are working. One thing I realized I forgot is that the lanes could use uh, a variable for how wide the... the um, so when I create a lane, what do I have right now? I have... I have it's Y position, total obstacles, speed, and spacing. You know, one thing I sort of feel like doing is maybe just making the speed random. I mean, why not, right? So I have fewer arguments. Let's make the speed random somewhere between like negative three and three. You know, let's just, um, so I don't need a speed. So that's sort of nice to see, right? So even just with the speed random, I'm going to get a lot of kind of variation there. And it could be hard. There could be a specific configuration it's supposed to be, but I'm going to make that random. Um, then I'm also going to... Um, uh, what I want then as another argument is the total number of vehicles and the size of those vehicles, the width. So I'm going to give it a variable called w. Does that mess things up though because it extends rectangle? So I don't want that. Um, so what is it? I'm going to call it the length. So this is the length of the cars or logs. And that can be actually be an integer because I'm going to think of it as uh, they all have to be a certain number of cells on the grid, a multiple of 50. So now when I create the lanes, I'm going to, and I'm actually, let's just, 
Could just make that random also. But no, you know what? I might end up, I'm gonna, let's just put, um, let's just put one in there. I'm gonna do this. You'll, you'll see, hold on, I got an idea here. So I'm gonna put one in there. Um, and then the obstacles, their width is grid times that length. And guess what? I don't think I need to actually keep track of these variables. Well, speed I do, because it's random. Like, I don't really need to keep track of this spacing. It's, oh, no, anyway, I'm really just using it to initialize, but that's fine. Okay, so now, look at this, that's with one. Now, what if I say, make, say that two? Great, so now you can see they're all double wide. And um, this spacing, I could make 200. And you can see now they're all spaced out by 200, and they're all double wide. So now I have this ability to just put, you know, as many or as few things. There's only one thing in each lane. There's three things in each lane, always with a random speed. So I'm hard coding the number of things they're with and their spacing, but I'm making their speed random. And I'm also going to add one more random thing, which is just a little offset so they don't all start together. Um, I'm going to create a variable called offset. Again, this is, doesn't really have to be, I, I can really just use this as a local variable here. And I don't really need this same thing with the spacing. This can just be spacing. I'm going to give it a random offset between 0 and 200, just as uh, giving it an offset. So what I mean by that offset is if I don't actually move them, they will all start slightly offset from each other. Okay, now we're cooking. So I'm able to now have all of these different lanes. And I, I want to give them a color and some other things at some point. That, that can be an exercise for you. Here's the thing though. What I love about this is I can run all the lanes, but I still think on some level I want to manually configure them. So it's nice that I can initialize them in the loop and I can make them random, but just for demonstration purposes right now, I'm going to configure them uh, I'm going to configure them one at a time. So lane zero has zero things in it, so the speed and spacing can be zero. That is where the frog starts. Lane one, which will be at grid spot, is going to have three cars in it with uh, what, what's the second thing? A, a width of one and an offset of 150. So, ah, okay, so lane, um, I'm, so I'm gonna just gonna do this now really quickly. Then two, three, four. Two, three, four will also be a safety lane. Then what do I have left? Uh, let's do this again. Uh, five, six, seven and eight. <laughs> I kind of want it, I kind of want four. I think what I would like, so let's make this uh, the height 600. I would like four car lanes, safety lane, four, uh, four log lanes, and then a, sa a last safety zone. So what did I miss here? Uh, oh, I need, Oh no, that's 10. That was right. I don't need to make it 10. 4, 4. No, no, no. That's 3. Ah! <sighs> I do need 11 if I'm going to do 4. <laughs> Look at this. You know, we've got a little less hard cut, some new hard coding, everybody. So let's make this now back to 600. And here we go. What did I get wrong here, people? I should have 11 lanes. Well, that's 12. 550. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Ah, right. And now they all need to, oh, this is awkward. This is awkward. Um, and here, I'm going to give them just a lane index. And then what I'm going to do in the lane object itself is set the Y location. And this is really not Y, it's like index. Index times grid. Index times grid and uh, index times grid. Okay, so you can see now, there we go. There are all of the lanes, 
and I want to make sure they update. And so there we go, all of my lanes. Now I can start to individually configure them. So I can say things like, the second one should have two that are triple wide and spaced out by 350 pixels. Uh, the third one should have uh, four spaced out by 200 that are one. Then this should have uh, three that are two spaced out by, oh, and I don't want the speed to be random actually because they really should be like every other one. Oh, and these are the top actually. Um, so what's first to, so I don't, the, the random speed is a bad idea. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to setting the speed manually because I wanna configure this manually and I'm going to give it, the last argument will be speed. And I'm going to say, uh, three, uh, negative 2.5, one, I have too many lanes, uh, 2.84, oh, I could have made it, I could have just had its direction and still have it be random, <laughs> and then zero. Okay, so now we can see, uh, in this one, they need to, the last lane, they need to be spaced out by quite a bit more, um, so let's space them out by 250. So there we go. So now I have, and then uh, some, I want these to change, like this should be uh, four, and this should be two, and this should be one, and this should be four, and this should be one double wide, uh, triple wide, uh, single wide. So there we go. Here is now my game of Frogger, and I can go through it. Now I'm not doing, I'm not doing any of the tests. Now I also, I want to give these lanes a color. I think it would be useful to give these lanes a color. The other thing I could do is I can, uh, yeah, let's give these lanes a color and let's make that the last, um, let's make that the last argument. Uh, color, and actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do something totally different. I'm gonna write a second constructor, second time today, although this was in a different video that I recorded earlier today, I'm gonna use something called constructor overloading. So I'm going to make a constructor that optionally takes a color as its second argument. And I'm going to use that just for all of the, all of the, uh, the three lanes that have no obstacles in it. And I'm going to say, write a new function that has its index. That can really be an integer and then a color, and it needs to call super, and then it needs to say obstacles equals a new array of obstacles with zero things in it. Don't wanna have any obstacles in this lane, and it's, uh, and I'm gonna give it a, uh, each lane is going to have a color, and its color is going to equal C. So in this constructor, the color will equal black. And here I can now, uh, and then when I, in the run function, I'm gonna draw a rectangle. Ooh, doesn't rectangle have a show? No, I have, I'm gonna create a, I'm going to just draw a rectangle. I'm gonna say fill that color and draw a rectangle at x, y with height. So we can see, there we go, oh I love this. Now I have a lane object. I can configure the game. Lane by lane. So I can create safety lanes with a different color and I can create lanes with, other, with obstacles in them. So now this is exactly the game, the only thing is, um, you know, none of the actual gameplay is there. So I need to go back and put that gameplay back in. Now I have all that commented out here. I don't need to draw the, these separately. Um, this, what I can do here is I can say, I can now look at every lane. So I can say lane.check frog. So I want every lane to check the frog. This is really what I want to do here. I'm going to take this 
And in the lane, I'm going to say, I'm going to write a function called check, which gets a frog. And then what I want to do is loop through all of the obstacles. I'm going to call them O. I'm going, I don't need show and update. That happens somewhere else. And I just want to check if frog intersects that obstacle, reset the game. So I'm just now going to do that as if all of the lanes are obstacles. Okay, see this stuff should happen really fast now that we've refactored. I should be able to do this stuff really easily. So see, every time I intersect an obstacle, I should get sent back to the bottom, right? Okay, so I'm able to play this game. Now I need to, I, I need to only check, so I need to figure out whether the lane is an, a, a, um, a log lane or a car lane. So maybe I'll do a type. I could do, let's do a type. Let's say, uh, I could make it a string. That's probably a bad idea. Let's do a, um, I'm going to do this in a kind of a goofy way. I'm going to say type. And the lane is also going to get as its second argument, uh, and we'll do that here too. It's going to get a type when I create the lane. So I'm going to say type equals s, type equals s. I'm going to create some kind of constants, string safety equals safety, string, um, what, what other types could be? Car equals car, string, uh, what's the other one? Log equals log. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the lanes this way. This one is a safety. This one is a car. Car, four car lanes. Then I'm going to have law, then I'm going to have another safety lane, a log lane, and another safety lane. Okay. So now we can see here, I've added this. Now I could have just put the strings directly in here, but I made these like separate variables at the top to store the actual strings because, and honestly, I don't want to use strings. I want to use numbers because I don't want to have to remember is zero or one. So I want to have a variable and these I could say in Java, awful Java monster language speak, I would say like final constant int. So I want to make these ints, but I'm just going to be sort of lazy and have them be, all capitals and integers. So now what I'm going to do here is this is an integer for a type. And I'm going to call it t just for type. And actually, I don't need to have this argument here. Uh, by definition, if it's getting, if it's using this constructor, it is a safety lane. Um, and this should be an integer and I can take it out of here. So these don't need explicitly to say safety because that's by definition, right? Just refactoring, refactoring, refactoring. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm gonna do in the lane check function is I'm going to say if type equals car, I'm going to do this, right? Now, otherwise, if type is a log, what is the thing that I did? I had this like very weird thing where I had to check where it was, but now I don't have to do that. I can just say, take this, all this code here, now, uh, I'm gonna just grab this for right now, and I'm gonna put this in here. This was the code for seeing if it's intersecting with any of these frogs, and if it is, attach that particular log. So I renamed some of these variables. And I'm just, just this is all the same code that I worked out the last time. I'm just, and if it's not, reset the game. Although this is a bit of a problem. So I'm gonna have to work this out. There's a, there's, this is gonna have to change because I'm doing it by lane now. So uh, let me take this out for a second. We're gonna work that out later. So let's just see right now. This should work. Whoops. 
where I should be able to, oh, look at that. Oh, whoa. So I, I need to get my attach and detach going again. Let me run this again. Whoa, it's already attached. Why is it automatically attaching in this lane? Oh, these are the logs. Ah, I forgot. <laughs> oh my God. That I did this, the top, I'm creating the lanes from the top to the bottom. So these are all the logs <laughs> and these are all the cars. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. <laughs> so now, right, if I intersect, I've got to get through all these. And now, here's the thing though, it's never going to detach. So I need to get the detaching back in. Thank you to uh, Alka in the chat. Who, so I, what I was thinking is one option would be to actually have the frog register which lane it's in, because I know it, which lane it's in based on its Y position, only check. Instead of, there's not really any good reason for me right now to have all the lanes check the frog. I kind of want to do that, but Alka had a different suggestion, which is just detach every time the frog moves, right? Because if you're going to, if the frog's going to jump, it shouldn't be attached to anything. So I could do, let's try that. That might actually be a really quick fix, but I'm now realizing that this loop for the lanes is kind of unnecessary. Um, I, I could just pick the one lane that the frog needs to check against. But let's do the detach thing real quick. Um, on move, I'm just going to say frog attach null. So it's always going to detach. I need to st start myself in the center, right? So you can see now all of those behaviors are back and you can see it's, so now I don't have the thing that's telling me to reset the game. So uh, the issue is, and this is why I want the frog to register its lane. The reason why I want the frog to register its lane is because if it's in that log lane and not touching a log, it needs, the game needs to reset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, and I still can do the move detach thing, int la which lane index equals frogs y divided by grid, right? and an integer version of that. That should give me the index that it's in. All right, let's just see this, print lane index. It's actually gonna have to be inverted, I just realized. Oh no, that's right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, so this works. So now, that's the only lane I need to check. So I can just say lanes, index, lane, index, check frog. So this way, oh, I got to start myself in the middle. So when I'm testing it, this is hard. Okay, I'm starting myself in the middle. Height divided by two minus grid divided by two is what it should be. Yeah, there we go, sorry. So now I should be able to, oh, okay. So now I should be able to jump around but, and get pushed off. But I now need, can go back and in the lane, check. If it's not okay, you lost. Reset the game. Okay, woo! So now I should be able to jump around, but if I fall off a log, I reset the game. Okay, woo, I think we refactored this pretty nicely. Somebody made a good point, like, well, why should I have this type variable? Maybe what I should do is use inheritance and have three different lane classes, car lane, obstacle lane, safety lane, and actually that's a very good idea, and I think it could be reasonable to refactor this yet again. So I think this is gonna be enough refactoring for this particular video. All I did was refactor into this lane, and I don't know if you can really see, this makes, if you really wanna see the beauty of what I've done, not that anything I've done is really that beautiful, what I love about this now is this is the draw loop. This draw loop is so simple. And, I, and the one thing that I would actually say is maybe the lane index, the frog should actually have a function that just returns its lane index. Because look what's happening here. I just run all the lanes. I just check the one lane the frog's in and update and show the frog. Even though this is a bit unwieldy, 
um, because I've initialized all the lanes manually and maybe there's a better way of doing the arguments and something should be random or I should have some type of algorithmic way of generating it. That's yet another opportunity. So with refactoring only comes more refactoring. Refactoring begets refactoring. Life is all just one big refactoring session. So uh, I hope you enjoyed my rather long refactoring session. I think there easily could be a part five to this and a part six. Um, what I want to say and, uh, is that check this video, if you want to contribute to this, there are a few things you can do. So in this, video, just in this video's description, there will be a link to a, a GitHub repository that has this processing version, that has a JavaScript version of this same code, and then also a link to another GitHub repository that uh, is got kind of a community created version of the game where people can add their own graphics and different things. And if you make your own version and want to link to it in a readme, there's all these ways you can share and contribute to this stuff. I need to say it more succinctly, but check the description and I'll describe it in there. So thanks for watching this part four. Is it the last? Will there be more? Will there be another? I actually have one thing that I was thinking of doing was redoing this whole coding challenge as one video, um, but in JavaScript. Now that I've done it in four parts, maybe I could do it all as one video faster. I don't know. We'll see. I'm thinking about that. If you're interested in that, uh, say in the comments. But I don't know that anybody's actually watched to the end of this video. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Oh, 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 no, don't leave yet. Sorry, one thing. I, I left. No, no, I think I, think I might have left. No, no, I, I got it right. Oh, no, I left the wrong. I left the wrong position. So there's, let's play this game one more time. I'm gonna make it. Oh no! Ah, ah shoot! Oh no! Come on! Oh, maybe edit some. Maybe speed this up. This is. I made this kind of hard because the last one is so fast. Yay! I win, Frogger. I win the prize of the internet prize. Thanks for watching. I'll see you uh, next time the train pulls into the station. Oh, oh.